Hi everyone, my name is Callie Moore and this is the Storytelling for Impact webinar presented by the Duguid Institute at the University of Maryland. Thank you so much for joining today. Again, this is me. My name is Callie Moore and I'm the program coordinator here at the Duguid Institute. Um, my role here is to work with student teams who are either starting social impact projects, looking to expand the work they're already doing, um, and think about new ways of sharing their work, um, improving their work, kind of coming up with new models, which is really exciting for me to be here on campus. Before that, I've worked in a variety of different nonprofits and federal agencies in um, the DMV area. And so I'm really excited to be talking to you today about one of the things I'm really passionate about, which is sharing your stories of the amazing work that you're doing. So why do you need storytelling? Uh, being able to tell your story is really a fundamental part of being human. It's how we connect with one another and learn from one another. Um, and there are many different ways to tell a story, and it may or may not be something you've actually kind of thought about before. And so today what we're going to be talking about is one method of storytelling that we've found is especially helpful for people who are working on social impact projects or who are doing any sort of advocacy work. Um, so again, it may be something you've heard before, it may be brand new, um, but we really hope that it, this storytelling format is something that's going to be able to help you um, tell your social impact story even more effectively. So let's back up and think about why, again, it's important to be able to tell your story effectively. So you're doing amazing work, and we want to make sure that other people know what you're doing. You could be interested in inspiring other students to either join working with you or to start their own important social impact work. You want to be able to share what you're doing to the community that you're working with. Um, and so telling your story will really help the community understand what you're trying to accomplish. Maybe you're trying to get people to mobilize, to volunteer, to join you, and you really want to inspire them to start. Um, or another really important thing we hear is that you're interested in securing different funding or investors, and so telling your story effectively is really important to doing that. Finally, um, you might be interested in educating local politicians, leaders, or other decision makers, and so knowing how to tell your story effectively will make sure that they understand the issue and what you're trying to accomplish. And then lastly, for personal reasons. Um, being able to tell an effective story is a skill that will help you no matter where you are, whether you're meeting new people, networking, in a job interview, um, but kind of connecting your personal story with the story of your organization and doing it well will really elevate your own experience of what you're trying to do. So this is a quote that I really love, and I think it helps frame this situation perfectly, which is, the stories we tell literally make the world. If you want to change the world, you need to change your story. This truth applies to both individuals and institutions. And Michael Margolis, um, who's the CEO and founder of Get Story, which is a storytelling organization, is the one who said this. And I think it's really important because it shares two things. One, that this applies to individuals as well as institutions or organizations, and that's something we'll talk about today, is how it's your individual story, but it's also the story of your work and your organization, and that are really, you can think about them similarly. And then in the first part of the quote, it says, if you want to change the world, you need to change your story. And this isn't saying you need to change the work that you're doing or the cause that you're fighting for. It's saying you might need to change the way you're speaking about it. And so that's what we find is really important, that a lot of storytelling is just framing things in the right way so you're connecting with your audience. And no matter what sort of work you're doing, there's elements of storytelling that will help you and kind of point you to the right way to connect to your audience. And so if you really want to motivate people, it may not be that you need to do anything differently other than tell your story differently to really get them excited. So kind of keep this quote in mind as we talk today. So... We've mentioned that we're going to share one framework of storytelling, and this is what it is. It's the public narrative framework. Um, so again, it may be something that you've heard of or not so much, or it's possible as we talk about what the narrative is, you realize that you have kind of done it before and didn't realize that it was a whole framework. So um, we'll get right into it. So the public narrative framework was popularized by Marshall Gans, who's here in the photo. 
Um, he is currently a Harvard professor and also did a lot of advocacy work with the United Farm Workers Association, um, which is where this kind of model was formalized. So what the public narrative framework does is it really works to motivate people to support you, your cause, your program, by sharing first a personal story how it connects to larger issues and to the community, and then finally bringing it to a conclusion with some sort of solution or action that your audience can take. This public narrative framework is great because with these elements, it can be adapted to many different situations. It can be said very quickly. It could be said in a longer speech. Um, it can work if you're talking just one-on-one -on -one to someone. It can work to a bigger audience. And so the elements can really be applied in a lot of situations which is why um, this framework is really great. So the focus of the public narrative framework, again, of how you're connecting your story to your audience is these three elements, the story of self, the story of us, and the story of now. So we're gonna dive into each of these elements a lot more, um, but very quickly, the story of self, again, is your personal experience, kind of what's happened to you or someone that you know very closely or an issue that you've seen very closely um, and why is it important to you. The next piece is us. It's how has what happened to you or kind of your personal experience, how does that relate to other people? What's the shared experience that they may have or how are others affected in a similar way? And then finally, the story of now. This is where you connect it back to your audience. Why should we care about this? What can we do about it? What's next? So again, these are the public narrative framework, the story of self, the story of us, and the story of now. This is a way to look at it in kind of a different format. And I really like this because it shows not only the three story elements, but how they can connect to each other. So another way to think of the story of self might be how you became to be a leader or someone who's willing to speak about this issue. That's the call to leadership. The story of us, again, as we mentioned, is that shared value and shared experience. And then finally, the story of now is not only what's happening now, but what's the strategy moving forward? And the areas in between, as you can see, the connected elements between all of these issues. So between the story of self and the story of now, that's kind of what your purpose is. Why do you care about this and what's important now? And that's kind of why you're trying to, you know, share your story. That's the main purpose. Um, the story of self and the story of us connecting to each other, that's your community building. So that's really, again, how when you share a story of self, connect it back to us, it's where you create that collective experience that brings people together and shows, wow, we're really not so different from each other and that's how we all are gonna care about this issue. And then finally, the story of us and the story of now, connect through a sense of urgency. So when you realize that you know, you're talking about a social issue, you're sharing how it affects so many people and then you're sharing about what to do now, Hopefully that creates a sense of, wow, like this is important. This is something we need to think about. Um, and that urgency is, again, what's going to hopefully call people to action. So this graphic we think is really great to put the story in different elements and really show why this public narrative framework might be the right way for you to share your social impact work. So before we kind of dive into how you're going to share your story, we want to first think about stories that have called you to action. So if you think about a really good storyteller, and this may be someone that you've heard in person at a conference, it might be a TED talk or another lecture that you've heard. Um, it may be a friend who's just really great at getting stories told or somebody that is really good at mobilizing people. Think about a story in your head. And here are some kind of things to sort of think about and help you figure out what makes a storyteller good. So first of all, really, what was the speaker's purpose in telling a story? Um, and again, we're thinking about social impact stories. And so we know that we love to tell stories about things that happen to us, to our friends and our family. Um, but when we're trying to tell a story to call someone to action, what was the purpose? What were they trying to get you to do? Um, and then the next one, of course, what was motivating people? You know, why were they trying to tell this story? What was the cause of it? Um, Something that we'll talk about a lot also is values. So when a good storyteller, what were sort of the values that they invoked? Something that was important to them that they thought was important to you? Um, what details or images sort of shared those values? Maybe they didn't say straight up, like something that is important to me is community, but maybe they shared that details of bringing people together, um, 
and connecting with others, and that's how they share the value. What were some challenges or choices that were told in the story? You know, what was the issue? How did they address it? And then what was the outcome? So think about that kind of storytelling in that element. And then finally, how did you feel at the end of the story? So hopefully if you're thinking of an impactful storyteller, it's because they left you with a feeling that made a difference. Um, and so these are really things that we think about of what makes a great storyteller. Of course, something else not mentioned here is um, just personality and kind of the presentability. Uh, but what we're really gonna focus on is storytelling elements. So, we're gonna share with you a public narrative example that we think is really powerful and from an especially good storyteller. Um, so what we're gonna share is Barack Obama's 2004 Democratic Convention speech. So this is when he was a Senator still in Illinois um, and he was invited to speak at the Democratic National Convention, which is where of course they promote um, the Democratic candidate who will be up for the presidential election. Um, I want to make a special note that this um, use of this example is not any sort of endorsement of a political party or person. We've just found that this um, example is very clear and something people can kind of easily see the storytelling elements is. And no matter your political party, um, hopefully you can see how Barack Obama is a very good storyteller. So before we share the story um, or share his speech, I want to remind you again of some things to listen for. So again, with a public narrative framework, we're thinking of the story of self, the story of us, and the story of now. Um, so listen to that in his speech for self. What experience is he sharing? What is calling him to leadership? For us, who is he defining as us? And what are the values that he's sharing that he believes all of us have? And finally, now. What's the challenge he's identifying and what is the call to action here? So here is a lovely photo of what I will be sharing today. And don't mind me while I set up the video to make sure that we can share it. So um, I will stop sharing my PowerPoint and then start sharing my video. Um, so this speech is seven minutes long. Um, also, if at any point you're having trouble hearing from this audio or this computer, feel free to pause the video, Google, um, YouTube, however you find videos, Barack Obama's speech at the 20, 2004 DNC convention or Democratic National Convention, um, and you should be able to find this video. Um, we're going to be starting um, at minute one from this version, or kind of right when he's introducing himself, it's seven minutes long, and then we'll be ending right at his kind of call to action. So here we go. On behalf of the great state of Illinois, crossroads of a nation, land of Lincoln, let me express my deepest gratitude for the privilege of addressing this convention. Tonight is a particular honor for me because, let's face it, my presence on this stage is pretty unlikely. My father was a foreign student, born and raised in a small village in Kenya. He grew up herding goats, went to school in a tin roof shack. His father, my grandfather, was a cook, a domestic servant to the British. But my grandfather had larger dreams for his son. Through hard work and perseverance, my father got a scholarship to study in a magical place, America, that shone as a beacon of freedom and opportunity to so many who had come before. While studying here, my father met my mother. She was born in a town on the other side of the world, in Kansas. Her father worked on oil rigs and farms through most of the Depression. The day after Pearl Harbor, my grandfather signed up for duty, joined Patton's army, marched across Europe. Back home, my grandmother raised a baby and went to work on a bomber assembly line. After the war, they studied on the GI Bill, bought a house through FHA, and later moved west, all the way to Hawaii, in search of opportunity. 
And they, too, had big dreams for their daughter, a common dream born of two continents. My parents shared not only an improbable love, they shared an abiding faith in the possibilities of this nation. They would give me an African name, Barack, or Blessed, believing that in a tolerant America, your name is no barrier to success. They imagined, they imagined me going to the best schools in the land, even though they weren't rich, because in a generous America, you don't have to be rich to achieve your potential. They're both passed away now. And yet I know that on this night, they look down on me with great pride. They stand here, and I stand here today, grateful for the diversity of my heritage, aware that my parents' dreams live on in my two precious daughters. I stand here knowing that my story is part of the larger American story, that I owe a debt to all of those who came before me, and that in no other country on earth is my story even possible. Tonight, we gather to affirm the greatness of our nation, not because of the height of our skyscrapers or the power of our military or the size of our economy. Our pride is based on a very simple premise, summed up in a declaration made over 200 years ago. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That is the true genius of America, a faith, a faith in simple dreams, an insistence on small miracles, that we can tuck in our children at night and know that they are fed and clothed and safe from harm that we can say what we think, write what we think, without hearing a sudden knock on the door, that we can have an idea and start our own business without paying a bribe, that we can participate in the political process without fear of retribution, and that our votes will be counted at least most of the time. This year, in this election, we are called to reaffirm our values and our commitments, to hold them against a hard reality, and see how we're measuring up to the legacy of our forebears and the promise of future generations. And fellow Americans, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, I say to you tonight, we have more work to do. More work to do for the workers I met in Galesburg, Illinois who are losing their union jobs at the Maytag plant that's moving to Mexico, and now are having to compete with their own children for jobs that pay seven bucks an hour. More to do for the father that I met who was losing his job and choking back the tears wondering how he would pay $4,500 a month for the drugs his son needs without the health benefits that he counted on. More to do for the young woman in East St. Louis and thousands more like her who has the grades, has the drive, has the will, but doesn't have the money to go to college. Now, don't get me wrong. The people I meet in small towns and big cities, in diners and office parks, they don't expect government to solve all their problems. They know they have to work hard to get ahead, and they want to. Go into the collar counties around Chicago, and people will tell you they don't want their tax money wasted by a welfare agency or by the Pentagon. Go, in, go into any inner city neighborhood and folks will tell you that government alone can't teach our kids to learn. They know that parents have to teach that children can't achieve unless we raise their expectations and turn off the television sets and eradicate the slander that says a black youth with a book is acting white. They know those things. People don't, expect, people don't expect government to solve all their problems, but they sense deep in their bones that with just a slight change in priorities, we can make sure that every child in America has a decent shot at life and that the doors of opportunity remain open to all. They know we can do better. 
and they want that choice. In this election, we offer that choice. Our party has chosen a man to lead us who embodies the best this country has to offer, and that man is John Kerry. Okay, so I'm going to flip back to sharing my PowerPoint. Great. So hopefully you were able to hear that video okay. Um, realize it was a little bit long, but again, it's a really great example of the public narrative framework. Um, so think back to what you just heard um, Barack Obama share. So for that story of self, he gave this really great example. He talked about his grandparents and his parents, kind of this whole idea of the American dream, right? That you could come to the United States, that you have access to an education, and it shouldn't matter what your background is, um, that you should be able to succeed if you work hard. Um, and again, whether or not people believe this to still be true, this idea of the American dream is pretty commonly understood here. And so he shared that. And he also shared how that is very um, connected to other people. Like so many people have this idea of the American dream. And so his story really kind of connects with other people. And that brings us to the self. So he defined self as basically all Americans, right? And he did this in a couple of ways. Not only did he share how his self and his story of his parents working hard and hoping for the best for him and that American dream connects to each other, but he also invoked some pretty widely held American values. He quoted the Declaration of Independence. He shared, you know, that Americans really believe that you can say your opinion, that you can, um, you know, stick up for what you believe and that that's welcomed here. Um, but he also shared how currently there's a lot of issues that are affecting tons of people. So the economy is struggling, um, unequal access to education was a really big issue, um, and how people, you know, weren't asking why we held for government to fix all their problems, but just to provide a pathway for, you know, to them to help themselves. And so this is kind of how he defined the us, right? It's kind of all of us that share these values that we really aspire to, but how we're also all faced with many, many challenges. And so finally, the story of now, um, that now kind of, again, hit upon the current issues that were affecting us. But then, of course, the call to action here is presenting his candidate, the person that he believes can kind of help address these issues, and that is a current election year. So again, um, we think that this is a really great example of the public narrative story. This one was told in seven minutes, and hopefully that can give you an idea of how you can use this framework for that long of a speech, how you could do it shorter, how you could do it even longer, um, as a really good example of how you can be storytelling. So next, we're going to really dive into how do you figure out how to tell your own story. So before we think about the three elements of self, us, and now, we want to kind of take it a step back, so thinking about it from a little further out. So what is the whole purpose first of telling your story? What are you hoping that people leave feeling with that, you know, what is the action that you want them to take? Um, kind of really start at the end almost. What is the thing that you really want to share that people understand about you, the work you're trying to do, about what they can do moving forward? Um, and that's where we want to be thinking of. And again, a way that the public narrative framework really focuses on is the values. So what values do you have? What values do you think other people will have? And so what are the values that you're trying to convey? Um, and you don't want to just say these values straight out, right? You want to invoke them. And so what are stories that you think about your life and your issues kind of show these values versus just telling them straight out? And then finally, thinking about what are the experiences or pieces of the work that you're trying to talk about that'll likely resonate and connect with others. So not everything about your life is going to be held in common with someone, but you want to be making sure you're start telling a story that other people can easily understand. So again, this is kind of that zooming out um, to really get you thinking about what are you hoping the overall effect of your story is? And that way, when we dive into the elements, um, you'll know which ones to choose. 
So first of all, again, the story of self. So this is about you, your life experiences, and what make you care about this issue. So I really love this image in the corner. It's of a man holding a mirror, but the mirror is showing his own face. And again, this is kind of invoking that reflective piece, right? So you really want to be thinking about yourself, kind of what's made you who you are, why you care about this issue, why you're working towards it, and that's the story of self that you want to share. If you're thinking about the story of your organization, um, then maybe this is more of the origin story, right? It's who started your organization, why did this organization come about, or the issue that you're trying to solve, like what is your organization trying to do? So it may be a little less personal to you, but it still should be that story of kind of what made that organization, your club, your team, who they are. Kind of what happened, what was seen by the people who started your organization that made them take action. And so whether or not you're thinking about yourself personally or your organization as a whole, some things that you might be thinking about um, is your childhood or family or sort of foundational experience that you've had that made you care about these issues, your school or career. So maybe you learned something or saw something firsthand that made you, you know, really open your eyes to this problem or the thing that you want to be talking about. Um, sometimes values are coming from faith or community. And so it's really not one experience, but really that idea of this is something that I truly believe in and hold dear to my heart. And that's why I care. Um, and more likely there are sort of important events or moments, again, whether in your personal life or your organizational origin story, that are really the thing that happened that made um, you step up, care about this issue or made your organization Another way to think about the story of self is to think about it in a very typical um, kind of story framework in terms of a novel, right? And so you can see here, there's an image in the corner that shows the character is the person, and then there's a challenge that happened or occurred, a choice that the character has to make, and then the outcome. And that's a pretty typical plot outline of any story, right? So think about any movie you've seen or novels you've read. Um, usually there's a character they introduce, there's a problem, the character has to make some choices about how to solve it, and then finally the story ends. So this could be another way to think about your story of self. So it's possible that one of the events or things that happened is sort of a challenge or thing that you're, you were faced with. Um, so you want to share, like, what was that challenge? And then finally, what your choice was that you made to address the challenge, and then what happened in the end. And again, by showing this challenge choice and outcome, it's kind of giving the listener an idea of um, kind of who you are, the values that you had and what they can do. So this challenge choice and outcome may or may not work for your story. Um, in our example from Barack Obama, this wasn't something that he used, right? He didn't really tell a personal story of challenge choice and outcome. Um, so that doesn't have to be the way you do the story of self, but we still find it to be a really helpful thing to share because many people's story of self do involve this kind of thing that happened, something that they did to address it, and kind of where they are now. Similarly, a story of an organization may be similar. There was a challenge in a community. Um, people kind of came together to figure it out and made a choice to do something, and then what happened next? So... Story of self is really, again, what is that sort of personal experience that you can tell that's going to set you up to share those values with other people and then connect them to what they can do about it. So next is the story of us. So again, um, you have to think first about who is the us that you're defining. So this, it could be really important to the audience that you're talking to, but you want to make sure everybody feels a part of that us. Or if an us is a very specific community, then you want to share who that is and why. Um, and then I, you're really connecting kind of that story of self to the common values that other people have, right? So many people, of course, care about their families. They care about access to opportunity. They care about caring for each other. And so you want to evoke these common values. This is another um, place where it would be a really great idea to start bringing in any sort of data or statistics about your community. So, of course, um, data and statistics. Sometimes if you have them out of context, they can feel really dry. People don't understand or really understand how those um, statistics are connected to the issue that you're solving. But if you share the story of us, 
or sorry, the story of self first, if you're really defining this for you, a specific person that you know, and then share that the community is, you know, this issue affects so many people. So if your example was um, growing up, I didn't have access to, you know, meals every day that were healthy and nutritious, and that really affected how I came to school. Um, and this is an issue that currently affects, you know, 10 million children across the United States, something like that. I don't know the actual statistics. Um, but this story of us is a really great example, again, of how you're sharing. How is what you shared in self connected to so many people? And when people already feel that personal connection to you, when you share a statistic about how many other people are affected by this issue, this is where um, that really hits home. And it's like, wow, that was one story of one person, but I can see how that could be for a huge community. And then last but not least, of course, is the story of now. So now is this really take action part. Why are you doing the work that you're doing now? What is important about this now? Is something new that is important that you want to share, or is it just a continual issue that hasn't been solved yet? So what is the now? Um, what do you really want the listener to take away? And then again, you pivot towards that action piece. What do you want your listener to do? What can they do about this? It would be really hard to share a story that's so personal and how it affects people and not leave your listeners with something that they can do. Um, and so you're going to also, again, want to tailor this action to your audience. And so figure out, um, is the action that they want to volunteer? And so here's how you join volunteering. Are you asking them to donate? And here's how they can do that. Are you asking them to, you know, be spokespersons for this issue moving forward? Um, so that is the story of, again, why is it important now and what can you do about it now? Another way to frame this take action piece is what would happen if you didn't take action now, kind of paint that bleaker picture. Um, we see this a lot with climate change, right? That you can personally make a lot of decisions about how you um, are, you know, buying products and consuming um, goods that really do affect the climate. And if we don't take action now, we're going to see a lot more species become extinct. We're going to see the world get hotter, things like that. So that's an example of kind of sharing both of if you take action, how could things be better? As well as if you don't take action, what could really happen? So now it's your turn to take action. So we just shared, again, um, all these elements of the public narrative framework, the public narrative framework of self, us, and now to create your story. And so this is your time to kind of reflect on what I've talked about today to create your personal story. And as we've mentioned before, you could be using one that's a personal version, right, of who you are, how things that are important to you are, you know, in common with other people, and the take action step, either what you're trying to do next or what you want people to help you do next, or you can create this organizational version. Who is your organization? Why did this organization form? What's important? How is this organization connected to the community at large? And then what's next for your organization? And so again, these elements of self, us, and now can be used in many different formats for you personally, for your organizational story, for your issue and the cause. Um, so definitely think about different versions of your different stories. And so you have them at the ready, depending on who you're trying to talk to. So as I mentioned a couple of times, the biggest piece of this is really tailoring to your audience. And so figuring out what different story elements you wanna use for yourself or for your organization is really important. But those may adapt slightly depending on who you're talking to. How you communicate and connect with your peers may be very different from how you communicate and connect to funders. It also may be different from how you connect and communicate to people who've never heard of this problem before. Um, so you want to make sure that the core pieces of your story stay true to yourself, but you may need to give different elements, um, details, or background pieces, depending on who you're talking to. And again, this also may be affected by different formats. If you're giving a formal speech, you may have this a lot more practice. You may be reading directly off of something that you've written versus in networking or just talking to people. You can still think about the storytelling element, right? If this is who I am, this is why I think it's important to everybody and here's what we're trying to do about it, but you definitely don't want to come across as super rehearsed. And so thinking about different formats and how this could storytelling framework works for different areas is really important. 
Um, this is why I really like this cartoon in the corner. And it says, I've got an elevator pitch, an escalator pitch, and just to be safe, a stairway pitch. And so hopefully most of you have heard an elevator pitch is this idea of a very quick way to introduce yourself and who you are in the time it kind of you would be riding up an elevator with someone just a couple of floors. Um, and I love how this kind of shares that, you know, depending again on where you are and who you're with, you're going to need different versions of this kind of quick storytelling elevator, escalator, stairway. Um, hopefully you'll have the time longer than that to be sharing your story, but I think it really hammers home that you're using the same elements, but you may need to adapt, add, or subtract details depending on who you're talking to and when you're talking to. And finally, as the last bullet here, the biggest piece about tailoring to your audience is that call to action. So maybe the elements of how you tell your story are very similar in terms of the story of you, of self, the story of us, but that action item is going to be super important. You want to make sure your listener definitely understands what you're trying to convey, which is, you know, it could be volunteer with us, it could be advocate for us, it could be help fund us, it could be just join us or share with us. Um, so making sure that you're really tailoring that call to action or those multiple calls to action, depending on who is listening. And then nothing here will be practicing. So once you have these elements of the story that you're trying to share, um, you have to practice, practice, practice. It may seem sort of silly to kind of sit into an empty room or to practice to, you know, people who already know your story, but the best way to feel comfortable sharing your story in a speech or networking is to really know it yourself. Um, and you might think, well, of course I know my story. I'm the one living it, right? But when you're trying to pick up out apart the elements that are really, you know, conveying the most important details and the most common values, it's really important to be practicing. Um, so get together with someone who's on your team, with a friend, um, and kind of do this practice of coming up with elements of your self story of what you want to share, your us story of how you're connecting to others in the community, and finally now. And again, it also is really important because if you have the core pieces of your story really practiced and they feel comfortable to you, you'll be able to adapt it so much quicker for every audience that you're meeting. So that is all that we have to share today. Hopefully this public narrative framework and the story of self of us and now can be really helpful to you and your organization as you're thinking about sharing the good work that you're doing. Um, and again, if you ever want to connect with us, these are social media handles, or you can find more information about the Do Good Institute at www.dogood.umd.edu. Um, so that is our webinar. And now I'm going to answer a couple of questions that um, we've gotten from doing this webinar a couple of times. So one question that we get asked is, um, how do you share really sensitive stories that you may um, be wanting to convey for the self, us, and now? Um, and how do you do that appropriately? That is a wonderful question. And honestly, I think it's those sensitive and really personal stories that are the most um, effective for that story of us, right? So it may be kind of difficult to share or very personal, but that is what's going to connect your reader, going to get them to feel, or your listener, and going to get them to feel really emotional about your work. And that's, again, where statistics could really help um, to share that story of us. And so I think what's important about sort of talking about sensitive issues with this public narrative or storytelling framework is that you don't have to go into every single detail. Um, you can just sort of mention why it is so powerful and effective and then connect it back. So for example, something that's really affecting people in the United States right now is the opioid crisis. And so if you are someone who personally has been affected because a friend or family member has either become seriously ill or passed away because of an opioid addiction or overdosing, share the story of your friend, why they were so important to you, and then how they weren't able to maybe get the treatment that they need or they felt too ashamed to come forward and that then share statistics. And so, yes, that's a very sensitive and very personal story, but those are especially the stories that are important in, you know, connecting to your audience and why the public narrative framework is really used to kind of get emotions from people so that they do want to take actions at the end. Another question um, that we've gotten is where else can we look for examples of effective storytelling? So, Personally, I think TED Talks are really great examples of different storytellers as well as different 
um, lengths of storing. So a lot of TED Talk users use this public narrative framework in order to share their stories. You'll find that they share a personal anecdote about them, who they are, kind of a challenge that they had, and then what they did about it or what kind of came from it, and then the action that they may want to take. And so some TED Talks are just a couple minutes long, some are you know, maybe closer to 20 minutes or more. And so TED Talks, I think, are really good examples of where you can be finding information. Um, and then lastly, of course, is just how do we get better at storytelling? And as I mentioned, the best thing to do is really practice. And so go back through this webinar, kind of look at those kind of questions that will prompt the story itself, the story of us, and the story of now, and then run it by a friend, run it by an advisor. Um, you may think that something is really a personal detail that's too much to share, but maybe your advisor or your friend is going to say that's exactly what you know got me passionate to help you with this issue. Or maybe you think that um, this statistic is more powerful, but someone else may have another statistic. And so something that's really important is practicing and sharing this with other people so that they really, you know, you can get feedback and start to understand what is going to resonate with um, the majority of your audience. So that's all we have again today. So thank you so much for joining. And if you do have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us on any of these social media accounts or on our website, and we'd be happy to help. Um, come back to the Do Good Institute for more resources on how to improve, create, or expand your social impact projects, and we're always here to help. Thanks so much.